Good morning. It's Thursday, October the 29th, and this is The Drill. Thank you, thank you. The uh, prayer of the day comes from dailyscripture.net. Lord Jesus, I place all my trust and hope in you. Come make your home with me and take possession of my heart and will that I may wholly desire what is pleasing to you. Fill my heart with love and mercy for others that I may boldly witness to the truth and joy of the gospel through word and example, both to those who accept it and those who oppose it. Amen. Welcome to all the butchers, bakers, and candlestick makers out there. I'm Ron, your host, and the only true conservative in the United States today. Who is the true conservative? He's the person that has the courage of his convictions and is confident in what he knows. He is not neutral. He's the person that understands that culture trumps politics. That's found, life is foundational. Everything's built on foundation, and politics is no exception. He's not selfish, but minds his own business. He uh, acts like an adult. He's patriotic and uses common sense. He's judgmental and moralizes. He refuses to speculate, speaks clearly and definitively, and is not afraid to say no. He's open-minded, asking why rather than why not. He's a consistent, credible, and influential, not ashamed of his existence, unafraid to learn or correct his mistakes. He's a normal American, and he's better than the socialist. He's a better friend, father, brother, family member, and a better person, period. You have to know that being a true conservative is best, or you're wasting your time. So what happens after Donald Trump leaves office? Uh, I assume that he's going to get reelected and he's going to serve another four years. And so in 2024, what do we do then? Who's next? Who are we going to? Uh, there's a lot of people that think that we should just vote Trump, keep voting Trump. Trump Jr., uh, Ivanka Trump, and this Trump, and that Trump. Just because they have the last name Trump doesn't mean that they are going to act like Donald Trump. And a lot of the, the, his family members are the ones that are telling him, giving him advice to quit being Donald Trump, to quit tweeting and uh, et cetera. So um, I'm not so sure that uh, just automatically, vo uh, as a matter of fact, I am sure that automatically voting Trump in 2024 is not such a hot idea. But the, the question again, long term, where is our culture leading us? If we keep moving to the left culturally, then we are going to, um, eventually we're going to run out of Donald Trump's and Ronald Reagan's and John F. Kennedy's. So um, that's what the, what the po podcast is all about, is you and I influencing our culture uh, to make it uh, conservative, move it to the right, and... Uh, then we can always have Donald Trump's, John F. Kennedy's, and Ronald Reagan's to choose from. And this country deserves no less. Uh, my podcast is short. It's approximately uh, anywhere from 10 to 30 minutes long because uh, shorter podcasts are easier to um, download and listen to. Um, the biggest socio-political influences in my life are my parents, my teachers, Sir Francis Bacon, John Locke, Sir Isaac Newton, St. Thomas Aquinas, Ayn Rand, and Dr. Mortimer Adler. My podcast is made available through Spreaker and can be heard on iTunes, Spotify, Google, and YouTube. Today, left-wing jerk of the day, where do we stand, quote of the day, right or wrong, conservative vocabulary, good news, bring back conservative aphorisms, and how to think about the polls and socialist vocabulary. All that when I come back. Thank you very much. The left-wing jerk of the day is Stephen Colbert, who thinks he's a comedian, but is really nothing but a left-wing jerk. The biggest problem with the news, besides undeclared bias, is the lack of continuity. I decide to take uh, issues facing the country and report on them daily until the story is complete. Hence, where do we stand? 
There's five days until the election. No news on the monster that has been arraigned for shooting two Los Angeles sheriff's deputies. George Soros is still not dead yet. No law enforcement union has been decertified, and no laws shielding officers from prosecution have yet been repealed. And again, uh, the danger of this, of not getting this done, is that and what you're seeing happening right now is that law enforcement uh, unions are gearing up to use the very disasters that they helped to create as uh, an excuse to get more pay and benefits for their members and to get more equipment and to justify and rationalize ever more aggressive behavior. They can point to the riots and say, see, this is why we need bigger guns, more guns. We need to be ever vigilant and on the lookout and leading with our gun because it's a, a, a dirty, nasty, dangerous world out there. Uh, and they ironically don't stop and think about how they contributed to this kind of an environment. So um, as long as they remain, these, uh, remain unionized, we're going to continue to have problems and ever worse problems. The so-called Patriot Act is still the law of the land. It's the worst law ever uh, devised for a democracy. It is undemocratic. It is un-American. And ironically, it was conceived of and perpetrated by Republicans during the uh, Bush administration. New York Times v. Sullivan continues to encourage news people to be super citizens who can use unnamed sources to slander and defame people at will without fear of consequence. Where's the expose on the Washington Press Corps? Where's nonprofit news? Jill Biden is still the ugliest woman in America for encouraging her feeble husband's campaign. The communist flu continues, but uh, the number of new cases is dropping, although there are spikes in certain places. Blue Cross and Kaiser Permanente continue to take our premiums while they avoid paying claims. They're the ones that are collecting our sacrifices. Governor Newsom has enacted a racist scheme to keep Californians locked down indefinitely. Negotiations on the communist flu relief bill are stalled because Nancy Pelosi wants to include all kinds of irrelevant provisions. When I come back, conservative vocabulary. Thank you very much. Being a true conservative is different than being the ersatz conservative that most of us are or run into on a, on a regular basis. Those people that are conservative on election day, uh, but after that they live like hippies and socialists. So if you want to be a true conservative, you've got to live like it. It's a lifestyle. It's a world outlook. And part of that lifestyle is the way you communicate, the way you talk. So you have to have the uh, true conservative vocabulary, which includes all the words the left doesn't want you to use because they think of it, the, the, these words are realistic. And uh, the left hates uh, real reality and realism. Words uh, like no, they hate the word no. That's the, the number one word. You want to turn, uh, treat, uh, have, a, have a lefty turn into a vampire type thing uh, the, the the cross to the vampire in the lefty thing is the word no. You tell them no and they bubble and fizz. They get all bent out of shape. Go back. That's a, they're always talking about well, going forward. That's their, always their slogan. Going forward, going forward, going forward. Well, it's not, that's not always the right idea. If we've d conducted some kind of a social experiment and it didn't work, we don't go forward. We have to go back and find out what it is that we're, get back to what it is we were doing before we started the experiment. Acceptance. Mind your own business. Some people on the left have a similar phrase, they call it stay in your lane. Right and wrong. Uh, they're absolutely uh, uh, gaga about those words as well. Should. They avoid the word should uh, because it's a judgment word. If you're going to judge people, you're going to use the word people or situations. You've got to use the word should. Good and bad, same, uh, same thing as right and wrong. They can't stand it. Evil, reality, certainty, morality, beauty, and polity. These are terms the left doesn't want anybody to use uh, because they're realistic, and realism defeats socialism every single time. The quote of the day, truth, quote, truth is ever to be found in simplicity and not multiplicity 
and confusion of things, unquote. Sir Isaac Newton. And now, right or wrong? And um, so Rush is almost correct in this 23-second clip from his show yesterday about Frank Luntz. Now, I know that Frank Luntz doesn't think much of Trump supporters. He doesn't like them. Uh, Luntz is uh, inside the Beltway uh, kind of guy. That's that's where his business is focused. So uh, Rush is almost correct, like I said, but uh, his problem is the way that he phrased the statement, which makes it sound like Trump supporters are the problem. What he should have said instead is Frank Luntz is the kind of guy that Trump supporters would not like. He is from the Beltway, etc. This way, Mr. Luntz is the problem and not you and I. Mr. Limbaugh finds himself making this mistake because he still erroneously thinks of himself as somehow neutral. He's not. He's obviously not because he, he tells everybody he's not. He claims that he's a conservative, that he runs the conservative university, and that there's no uh, graduates because the learning on, is ongoing, etc., etc., etc. He claims to be conservative, and he claims to be a Trump supporter, and is biased in that direction. And since Mr. Limbaugh is obviously biased, then he may as well and should act like it for the sake of uh, clear communication and for, for the sake of promoting conservatism. Every other talk show on the radio spends uh, all of its time grinding its audience with negatives and bad news, clips of uh, Nancy Pelosi saying rude things about the president, et cetera, et cetera, or just about everybody saying rude things about the president who doesn't deserve that kind of behavior. And this is demoralizing. Uh, I don't want to listen to it. It just makes me irritable and annoyed and depressed. And so that's why in my podcast, I want to make sure that I include good news. And the good news today is that uh, Judge Amy Barrett has been confirmed and sworn in and is now Justice Amy Barrett. Celebrations on this. We need to uh, make time to celebrate. So let's celebrate the... uh, Uh, confirmation of Justice Amy Barrett. President uh, Trump has solidified another peace treaty, another reason to celebrate. And this one is between Sudan and Israel. Ha ha to John Kerry, uh, who said that this was impossible. There's a clip of him saying, absolutely no way, it'll never happen. Uh, The Palestinians have to be part of the process, yamina, yamina, yamina. Well, guess what, Mr. Kerry? You suck, you're wrong, and uh, that's that. President Trump was nominated three times for a Nobel Peace Prize and not in anticipation of what he might do, but as a reward for what he has done. Uh, Don't believe the polls. The only purpose of the polls, as uh, Rush uh, has noted, is to shape reality. And and later on in my podcast, I've got uh, how to think about the polls. So, and they're used to project rather than reflect uh, and it's funny, too, because these pollsters say, act all amazed when they come up uh, short. They, uh, uh, how did this happen? How did this happen? Well, simple. Uh, you know how it happened. You tried to shape reality. You wanted to project uh, something and try to force, uh, force your way and will onto the American people, and it just didn't work. Nice try. Try again next time. Um, the only relevant statistic is incumbents win re-election 85% of the time. So, and uh, those that are uh, popular, popular presidents win even more, uh, per- higher percentage of the time than that. So, um, President Trump's judicial picks are beginning to have an effect. The uh, Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals struck down a California law banning high capacity magazines as being in violation of the Second Amendment to the Constitution. And that's the Ninth Circuit Court, the most left wing circuit court in the United States, other than perhaps the one in Washington, D.C. And um, so a few years before Trump, this wouldn't have happened. The uh, Ninth Circuit Court would have put its stamp of approval on that law instead of uh, shooting it down. 
The left has its resistance, but we have persistence. Attorney General Barr and Senator Lindsey Graham continue to conduct a thorough investigation into the treacherous behavior of former FBI Director Coney and his henchmen. And uh, Coney is not only, or Comey is not only a um, a bad guy, but he's a smug bad guy. And so that's why I, I really, really want to see him frog marched out of his house to a squad car while his mom weeps her eyes out. The mayor of Los Angeles and the LAPD show respect for property rights and the rule of law for once by announcing dozens of arrests and an ongoing pursuit of suspects from summer rioting. The Michigan Attorney General announced that she will no longer enforce the governor's executive orders. Ha ha to you, Governor Whitmer. Because, and the reason she's not going to enforce those orders is because there, the Michigan Supreme Court uh, shot, those, uh, shot that idea down, said that the uh, governor was overreaching and that she had no authority to issue the executive orders that she was issuing. Uh, the state of Florida has the courage to lift all the coronavirus restrictions and businesses and schools are reopening. Hooray for the governor of Florida. And I'm really hoping that all the other states take a cue from this and start doing the same thing. Grocery store shelves are full again. And this means that things are getting back to normal, slowly but surely. Real normal, not new normal, not anarchist normal. Nothing can stop Rush Limbaugh, not the left nor cancer. He continues to broadcast. Good for him. God bless Rush Limbaugh. And Amazon stock is up. As a conservative, we make the presumption of the status quo. It's one of the primary features of being a conservative. We don't go looking to make changes. We don't get up in the morning and say, what can I fix? What can I change? We get up in the morning and we take the world as we find it. And we make our changes when there's an obvious case or an obvious reason uh, to do so. But in our civilization, uh, the so-called conservatives, the faux conservatives, have allowed the left to get away with bullying and intimidating us into going along with changes uh, that we shouldn't have gone along with. Uh, they, these changes have come about under uh, duress. And so uh, the following is a list of ideas, concepts, and abstractions that shouldn't have been changed in the first place, and so they should be brought back. Bring back property rights. People continue to forget about something called property rights. If you, if people talk about freedom of speech. I got freedom of speech, freedom of speech. Yes, on your own property. If you're on your, on your property and you, you're in home and you want to say all kinds of nasty bad things about whomever politically, you have the right to do that. That means no police department is going to come and arrest you for saying those things. But the key is property rights. And you're, you're on your own property. And property rights, by the way, are the foundation of all other rights. Look at the, the uh, Bill of Rights and the vast majority of the rights uh, delineated in the Bill of Rights are, uh, do, have to do with property, search and seizure, for instance. But uh, you can speak your mind on your property. But you come to my house, you do things my way, okay, because this is my property. And so um, if I don't want to hear from uh, you know, what, uh, you know, from, say, uh, you're going to promote Hillary Clinton, I have the right to say, not in my house, you won't. And if you don't like it, get out. And then the right to uh, enforce that. So uh, bring back the pre-1970 filibuster. Uh, the filibuster right now is not what it used to be. It used to be a good, solid, common sense way for people in the minority to uh, make themselves heard. And now uh, it's just a way of um, killing bills. It's just a bill killer. That's all it's used for. Bring back outlaws. If you're going to flaunt the law on a regular basis, say, as a terrorist, then you shouldn't get the protection of the law. Single-income households, integration, parenting, and along with it, corporal punishment, the primacy of existence, certainty of knowledge, universal rights and wrongs. Bring back principled behavior, masculinity and femininity, Adam 12, John F. Kennedy, the gold standard, pre-HMO medical care, non-profit news, civil service, the term stupid question, arguments and fights, the cultural influence of the church and Boy Scouts, bring back the influence of social organizations such as the Lions Club and the Rotary Club, bring back bowling and bring back smart. 
Be of good cheer. The universe is benevolent and success is to be expected. Therefore, the left has no authority, no power, and they can't win. Think about it. Conservative aphorisms. These are words and phrases that I think would make excellent bumper stickers. Why? Who asked you? Who cares? Who is we? Are you sure? How do you know? No, you don't understand. No, you are not listening. You're right. I don't care. No, you're not a leader or a change agent. Who died and left you in charge? And my personal favorite, get off of my lawn. Next up, how to think about the Hunter Biden laptop situation. Thank you. Um, let's see. Let's see where we're at here. How to think about that? How the poll side. Uh, wait a minute here. Trump supporters? Nope. What this is going to be then, I'm sorry, is uh, how to think about uh, the polls. That's it. I don't know why I did the Hunter Biden laptop situation. That was yesterday. So, anyways, uh, about the polls. How to think about the polls. The polls. How they hide Trump's lead from the American conservatives. Uh, or actually, how they hide Trump's lead, and it's an article from the American conservative. Well, I'm having a, some troubles this morning. Two pollsters who got 2016 right think that the mainstream polls are wrong again. And although they grant that the election is awfully close, at this point they predict a Trump electoral college victory. Patrick Basham of the Democracy Institute in his latest poll predicts an easy electoral college victory for Trump with all the battleground states in Trump's column. Robert Kahali of Trafalgar Group predicts an electoral college victory in the mid-270s. These pollsters predict a Trump victory because they take into consideration that other pollsters don't, something known as the social desirability bias in the polls. It's a bias that happens when people that are being polled are untruthful about their vote and they're uh, conscious about their social status, so to speak. They don't want to admit to people that they're going to be uh, admit, uh, voting for Trump because they're afraid of uh, very severe disapproval and worse. Uh, late uh, 2016, it was disapproval. Now, uh, there's the potential for violence. Um, these, there's number, uh, they also indicate that there's a number of problems with uh, the other polls. One issue is how difficult it is for the polls to reach working class uh, people. And one of the biggest problems with the polls is that 98% of people refuse to take them. So it's kind of hard to get a random sampling uh, and establish confidence in your poll when nobody wants to talk to you. Another reason for Trump supporters to be upbeat is the primary model of predicting elections created by Professor Helmut Norpath. It's a model based on uh, how uh, well, how easily somebody wins a primary, uh, wins their primary, Democrat or Republican. So uh, in this particular case, the, the uh, Democrats had to fight for it, and um, Repub uh, Tr Donald Trump coasted to victory, so to speak. The model's been accurate in 25 of 27 presidential elections, and this year's Norpoth model predicts a decisive Electoral College victory for Trump in November. Up next, socialist vocabulary. Thank you very much. So... Um, the socialists have their own vocabulary. It's one of the ways they try to, that they try to be attractive is they talk sort of their own language. It's like back in the 60s where you had uh, people that were hip. You had people that were square. And um, if you weren't hip, you didn't know what those words meant. And so the idea was try to encourage people to want to be hip and uh, go ahead and learn uh, left-wing lingo and communicate uh, with le uh, left-wing lingo or left-wing um, vocabulary 
and uh, thereby get in your psyche, uh, get you to, to live and act like a socialist and eventually vote like one. Um, socialist vocabulary includes such words as stakeholders, Latinx, empower, going forward, mansplaining, politically correct, supportive, and hegemony. Back in a minute. Who is a socialist? He's the man that seeks consensus rather than develop his own opinions. He is subjective, petty, and small, taking everything in life personally. He's outrageous, boring, and rude. He pretends to be a leader and a change agent. He pretends to be your friend. He's sly, cunning, and deceptive. He dresses and acts and speaks like a slob. He's informal and terminally unique. He is childish and pretends that he knows nothing. He is pragmatic and has no conscience and pretends that might makes right and that the ends justify the means. He acts randomly and rationalizes his behavior. Deterministic, blaming others for his mistakes. Skeptical, demanding that others solve his problems. His unreasonableness and irresponsibility make him a bad role model and a bad father, brother, family member, friend, and a bad person, period. So if you think that you should be friends with a socialist, think again. Uh, Coming up on the next episode, how to think about justice. And that concludes another episode of The Drill. Be honest, be smart, be beautiful, and always ask yourself, what is real, how do I know, and what should I do about it? I'm Ron, and that's The Drill.